Hey, this is Calvin. We're at the Aloe Yoga Flagship Store in Beverly Hills, and this class is going to be yoga for runners. For those of you that run a lot, we're going to address basically the lower half of the body, all the areas that get tight and sore for you. So please don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel. We have a ton of new content we're pumping out all the time, and let's get into class. All right, so for today's class, I would suggest two props. If you have a block and a strap at home, that would be awesome. If you don't, grab a book maybe that's somewhat thick and even like a belt or anything, a robe, a robe tie, whatever you got. Um, but those are the two props I'd suggest for this class since it's for Yoga for Runners. And then we're going to start out on your back. And the left foot, you're going to have flat as if you're going into bridge pose. The right foot, take the strap around your foot and lift the leg up to the ceiling. Keep your head and shoulders down on the floor so the chest is wide. And then as you extend that right leg up, the right side body tends to shorten a little bit. So send the outer right hip forward a little bit so the right side body feels a little longer. Flex through the heel. And then don't neglect the left leg. So really press the left foot down and see if you can feel like the inner edge of the left foot roots down a little bit extra so the left thigh bone's tracking forward. You can climb the hands up the strap a little bit and then draw the arms in towards the shoulder socket to get a little more opening in the chest. So we want some width across the chest as opposed to rounding the back, which can kind of pull on the lower back. And then you'll take a couple breaths here. So if you're at home and you practice ujjayi breathing in and out of the nose, across the back of the throat, go ahead and start to fire that up. If you hear that and you're like, I have no idea what you're talking about, don't even worry about it. Just try to breathe smoothly throughout class. And then we're going to go ahead and just switch sides. So the right foot will go down, strap around the left foot, and the leg goes up. The head and shoulders are down, and it's kind of like I'm lifting the ribs behind my heart up towards my chest so the collarbones stay broad. The right thigh, it almost draws in a little bit as I root through the inner edge of the foot, and that outer left hip lengthens forward as I flex the left heel. And then you can climb the hands up the strap if you'd like. Keep the head down and work to breathe smoothly. So, so especially through all of these longer format classes where you're not just doing a couple stretches post-workout, breathing smooth is really important. And it's a lot easier to establish your breathing patterns when you're on the floor in a stretch as opposed to in a challenging standing pose or something that raises your heart rate or makes you work a little bit harder. So through the passive stretches, you kind of establish your breathing patterns and then you kind of tone back into them throughout the class. We'll take a couple more breaths here. And that's good. And then you'll place your strap off to the side. Cross your right ankle over your left knee and flex the heel. Keep the head and shoulders down. Reach your right arm between the legs, left arm around. So I'm grabbing the front of the shin. As I draw the legs into the body, it's really easy to kind of lift the head up towards the body, but we want to do the opposite. Keep the head and shoulders down for the most part and feel like you're drawing the legs in. If it's not accessible to grab the front of the shin, grab the back of the thigh, and that's totally fine as well. You'll just get a little stretch in the outer hip as we just stretch the back of the legs. Again, stay wide across the chest if you can. Keep your hips on the floor. Try to avoid rounding the back and lifting the hips up just to feel like you get a little more tuck position. So that's not important. And then we'll go ahead and switch sides. So the left ankle crosses over the knee. Make sure that you're on the ankle or even up towards the shin so you're not sickling the foot, which can be bad for the ankle. The flex in the heel will help you to engage the muscles around the knee, which keeps it a little bit safer in these bent leg poses, especially the stretches. And then nice and flat on the back. Slow your breathing. Another couple breaths here. Again, just make sure that the head and shoulders are down. You're drawing the legs in towards the body as you get a little deeper stretch. And then go ahead and release it. From here, you're going to come up to seated. 
You're going to make your way into downward facing dog, but we're going to modify it a little bit. So I want you to come up onto your tiptoes and bend your knees a lot. So with the heels nice and high and the knees bent, lift your hips high away from your hands. Spread your fingers wide, press your whole hand down, and just take a few breaths here. So see if you can feel like your thigh bones press back slightly without having to straighten the leg too much, and the hips are able to get nice and high away from your hands. The triceps wrap down so the back of the shoulders have a little bit of width to them, and that translates to some space in the base of the neck. And then step your right foot forward. So as your right foot gets all the way between the hands, it walks to the right a little bit, come up onto your fingertips and reach your chest forward. As I'm reaching my chest forward, I'm reaching the left leg back and lunging deep in the right leg. So it's almost like the right and left thigh bone are moving away from each other. The chest lengthens forward, and then my back knee goes down. With my back knee down, shift the weight back, flex the heel, walk your hands back so they're under your shoulders, and try to reach your chest forward. So don't be too attached to trying to get to the leg, but think length in the front of the torso so you address the back of the leg and not the lower back instead. And then from here, shift forward into the right leg, palms down, again, down dog with the knees bent a lot. So I firm the upper arm. I'm just trying to create a lot of length from the hands through the hips. The thigh bones press back a little bit. And then left foot steps forward. It walks over to the left a little bit as I come up onto my fingertips. And then I bend into the leg and I reach my right leg back. So it's pretty easy to kind of reach through the heel. But see if you can feel like you reach back almost from the low belly. You'll feel the thigh lift up so the hips are even height from the floor. And it kind of anchors the pose, allowing me to get a nice deep bend in the left knee and reach the chest forward without feeling like I'm falling forward. And you maybe you bend a little more as those thigh bones feel like they're moving apart. And then just set the back knee down. As you shift your weight back and flex the heel, Hands under the shoulders, reach your chest forward. If you can't get the hands to the floor under the shoulders, use blocks or a prop to put underneath your hands. And one more breath. And shift forward into the front knee. Curl the back toes under. Come into plank pose. And then slowly lower down to the floor. Release the toes here on the tops of the feet and really press the tops of your feet down. Now as you do that, reach your arms back, press your palms into the floor, draw your belly in a little bit to support the low back, and just lift your chest up. And you want to start to reach through the fingertips, you feel like the shoulders move away from the ears. Try not to look too far forward, which makes the front of the neck long and shortens the back of the neck. So you gaze a little bit forward, so all four sides of the neck are nice and long. And then release your forehead down. Take a breath or two here. And then come back up. This time, hover the hands off the floor. Reach back firmly through the arms and start to hover the legs off the floor. Feel like you really reach the 10 toes back and the inner thighs kind of spin up towards the ceiling a little bit to create a little extra space across the lower back. And maybe you lift a little bit higher. and then release it down. Take your hands next to your ribs, push up to hands and knees, and pull your hips back, downward facing dog. Take a breath or two here, reach through the heels, press the thighs back, firm the upper arm, basic alignment and down dog. And then bend your knees, look forward, and step or jump to the front of your mat. For today, we'll keep your feet a couple inches apart. So on your inhale, reach your chest forward and exhale fold. Inhale all the way up, reach your arms high to the ceiling and exhale hands together at your heart. So we'll do a couple of half sun salutes now. And on your inhale, reach the arms up, lift high. On your exhale, take your arms wide, lead with your chest, fold forward, hands down to the floor. Inhale with a nice flat back, come all the way up and then hands together at your heart. We'll do two more of those. So inhale, arms up. Exhale, fold. 
Inhale halfway. Exhale fold. All the way up on your inhale. And exhale, hands to your heart. One more time. Inhale, arms up. And exhale, fold. Now inhale halfway, heel toe your feet together, and you're gonna cross your left ankle in front of your right. I tend to use a block for this one, you might not need to, but it's always good to have it handy. Now I'm gonna keep my right leg straight. If you tend to hyperextend, you can put a little bend in the right knee. If not, feel free to keep it straight. The left knee is gonna bend, but the heel stays down, and then your body's gonna twist to the left, and you're gonna draw the right hip back. And it works down the outside of the leg. And you'll take a couple breaths here. So the action's in the leg, the right hip is drawing back, the torso is twisting to the left, both heels are down, and then just breathe smoothly. And then we'll come right back to the center, release the crossing of the ankles, and switch sides. So the right ankle crosses in front, left leg now goes straight, right knee bends with the heel down, Twist to the right and draw your left hip back. And try to keep both the heels down. Breathe nice and smooth. and then come on back to the center. Place your block off to the side, take your hands to your hips, and stand on up. So from here, we're gonna get back into opening up the back of the leg and the hip. And this whole class is basically opening up the lower body from your running and a little bit of work towards the lower back. So with your hands on your hips, hover your left foot off the floor. Again, if you tend to hyperextend a lot, you can put a little bend in the right knee. If not, keep the leg straight. Lift your chest up, and then on your exhale, Lean out as far as you can without rounding your back. So for me, that's about here. Some of you can go lower, some of you might be higher, but if you notice that you're rounding your back a lot just to get closer to the floor, try to back off a little bit. Think back bend a little bit in the torso. You'll feel it all down the back of the leg, especially in the hamstring. And then stand on up. Set your left foot down, cross your right ankle over your left knee. Reach your arms straight out in front of you nice and actively, and as the arms reach forward, sit the hips down and back, and you'll stretch the outer hip. So we kind of alternate between the back of the leg and the outer hip. And if you're nice and strong with the arms reaching forward, it'll let you sit the hips down and back a little more. It gives you some counterbalance there. And then stand on up. And we'll switch sides. So now the weight goes into the left leg. The right foot hovers off the floor. My left leg stays straight. Start to arch my back a little bit, keeping the hands on the hips. And just lean out as far as you can without rounding the back, or to the point where you feel yourself start to round the back. Think back bend in the torso, so the action of the torso is the chest moving forward, the, legs press, or the left foot presses down firmly, that right foot's hovering, and then come on up. From here, weight goes back into the right foot, left ankle crosses over the knee. Again, flexing the heel and taking it past the ankle so I don't sickle the foot. Arms reach out nice and strong. And then bend as you sit the hips down and back. And as you're a little stronger with the arms, sit a little lower. And then stand on up. From here, step your right foot wide. And you'll turn your right leg out. So you want the foot to point towards the back of the room, or to the back of the mat. The back foot turns in a little bit. That helps me to draw the right hip in. Right hand comes down outside of the leg. Left arm reaches up, triangle pose, trikonasana. Won't keep you here for too long. Feel like the outer right hip moves towards the inner left thigh a little. And as that happens, root through the ball of your foot. The block's a great idea. If you can easily get your hand to the floor, awesome. Most of us need a block. And then get nice and long with the right side body. So really lengthen it. Turn the chest as you reach the top arm high and stay really strong with the back leg here. Now one more breath here, and then you'll inhale up to standing. When you do that, turn your right foot in, take your feet a little bit wider, lift your chest up, 
and then just fold forward, hands on the mat. Inhale, reach your chest forward. Let your left foot turn out just a tiny bit. Same with the right foot, actually. And then on your fingertips, bend your right knee as much as you can. Reach your chest forward away from the hips and pelvis and be happy here. If you're looking for a little more, you're more than welcome to reach your arms out to the sides. Think about paralleling your torso with the floor instead of rounding and dropping in. And one more breath here. Straighten your right leg, grab a hold of the block if you used it, and stand on up. Take your feet a little bit closer, and then we'll go into the left side. So pivot at the heel, turn the left leg out so it points forward. That keeps the knee safe. Back foot turns in a little bit. As the left hip draws in, I root the right foot down, lengthen the left side body, and my hand comes down for triangle. So the actions of the left leg, we root through the ball of the foot and draw the left hip back and in. Those two actions create stability in the leg. And you'll notice if you overdo one, the other one becomes difficult. So if I just draw the left hip in, the inside of my foot lifts. If I'm super stubborn about this, it's hard for me to firm that back hip. So you want to get that left leg nice and stable and then use the right leg a lot. And as it feels nice and anchored, the left side body lengthens. I'm able to turn my chest a little bit more. If you can look past the right hand, awesome. If not, feel free to look to the side if it doesn't feel comfortable on your neck to do so. And one more breath here. And then come on up. Turn your feet to parallel. Take the feet a little bit wider. Let the toes turn out slightly as you fold forward, hands under the shoulders. Inhale, chest forward, and bend your left knee as much as you can. Continue to send the chest away from the front of the pelvis and think back, bend a little bit in the torso. Draw the navel in slightly. And if you're looking for more, you're more than welcome to reach the arms out to the sides. And then straighten the leg, hands to your hips and stand on up. Step to the front of your mat. Feet a couple inches apart, hands together at your heart. And one round of Surya Namaskar A, just a sun salute to kind of flush that out. So inhale, arms up, and exhale, fold. Inhale, halfway, and then step back to plank. From plank, shift forward, lower halfway down, chaturanga. Roll over your toes, lift your chest, up dog, and pull your hips back, down dog. From here, step the right foot forward, turn the back heel down. The back foot can turn in or be parallel with the mat, but don't let it turn out. And then we'll take the forearm to the thigh and reach your left arm up to the ceiling. So feel like that outer right hip firms as you bend deep in the right leg and the left foot presses firmly into the floor. As I'm reaching the left arm up, it's easy to sit in the right shoulder. Lift out of it instead. And with that top arm, just take it behind your back. Feel like the left shoulder opens towards the ceiling. Some of you can get the hand in towards the crease of the thigh. If not, no big deal. And you want to feel like that outer right hip is moving back slightly as the right side body is lengthening and you're turning your chest with that. Take another breath or two here. and then take your hands down. Spin to the ball of your back foot. Take your right foot, heel toe it all the way over to the left so that your feet line up. It's almost like you're standing on a tightrope. Now take your foot and slide it forward a little bit, a couple inches. Take your hands out and to the side, and then on your exhale, you're gonna drop the knee open towards the floor. It might get all the way down there, it might not get close, not important and then bring the knee back in. So you want to be all the way on the outer edge of the foot, and you'll feel it in the hip quite a bit. So on your exhale, open the knee towards the floor. Inhale, bring it in. Three more times. Exhale, open. Inhale in. Exhale, open. Inhale in. And then one more time. Open it up. And come on back. And then we'll step back to downward facing dog. Take a breath or two here, reach through the arms and reach through the legs.
And then we'll step our left foot forward. The back foot turn, the back heel turns down, forearm goes to the thigh. And again, the back foot can be parallel with the back of the mat if you have more open hips or turned in, but try not to turn it out. It's not too good on the low back. With the left forearm on the thigh, the right arm reaches up. We lift out of the bottom shoulder, top arm goes behind your back. Start to turn the chest. If you feel like that makes you stick the belly and front body out, draw the navel in. And as we're looking for the turn of the torso, that outer left hip firms back, left side body stays long. Couple breaths here. And then hands down. Come to the ball of the right foot, heel toe that left foot over to the right, and then slide it forward a little bit. Hands go out and to the side so they're not in the way. And on your exhale, open the knee towards the floor and then draw the knee back in. Exhale, open. Come back in. Three more times. Open. Back up. Open. Back up. One more time. Open it up. And then come on back. From here, step back into down dog. Reach through the arms, reach through the legs. Again, wrap the tricep down so the back of the shoulder has some width that translates to space across the base of the neck. Take your block back towards the back of your mat and then walk your hands all the way back to your feet. Once you get there, grab a hold of your big toes, inhale, reach your chest forward, and exhale, fold. Try to relax the neck, take a circle or two in each direction. Lift the top of the leg as you press the foot down and keep the front of the foot rooting down even though you're pulling up on the big toes. And now from here, you'll lift the chest halfway and heel toe your feet together. You should be at the back of your mat. So keep your left foot where it is. Step your right foot in front of your left. Again, kind of like you were walking on a tightrope. Take your block in front of your right foot. And then right hand goes to the hip and you just turn the chest to the right. Draw the hips back a little bit. Send the chest forward as you turn the shoulder. And release the hand down. Move that block forward a little bit. Keep your right foot where it is. Step your left foot forward. Then the right hand comes onto the block, the left hand on the hip. Turn the chest. One more breath here. Left hand comes down. Keep your left foot where it is. Step your right foot forward. Maybe the block comes a setting lower. Hand on the hip, turn your chest. Maybe the arm starts to reach up towards the ceiling. Right hand comes down. Keep your right foot where it is. Step your left foot forward. With the block out in front of you, maybe it comes down to the lower setting. Have the hand on the block. Hand on the hip, turn your chest. If you're comfortable there, start to reach your arm up to the ceiling. And then come on down and release the feet. So you're at the front of your mat, roughly. If not, just step up there. Feet a couple inches apart and stand nice and tall. With your hands at your heart, we'll take another round of Surya Namaskar A, Sun Salute. Inhale, arms up and exhale, fold. Inhale, halfway. Step or jump it back through your vinyasa or straight to down dog. Now from here, please step your right foot forward. Put your back knee down, but keep the toes curled under. Start with the hands on the front knee and lift the chest up. So reach back through that left heel and it should help you to stay out of the lower back. Sometimes when we're on the top of the foot, it's really easy to kind of sit in the lower back and just sink forward. So instead, reach back through the heel, reach your arms up to the ceiling and start to turn to the right. Reach back through the right arm and lift the chest high. So you feel like you're turning with the length of the torso and don't be frustrated if you don't feel like you turn as much as you would in a normal twisting posture. One more breath here. And then take your hands down to the floor. Walk your right foot to the right a little bit so that both hands can go inside of the leg. And then you can stay here 
or some of you can lower the elbows and forearms down to the floor. If you're kind of in the middle section, take a block or two and put your forearms on the block. And for today, let the right foot turn out halfway and the knee drop open. Reach your chest forward if you want a little more. Reach the left leg back, keeping the knee off the floor. If the knee's up, set it down. Take the foot back in. Press the inner edge of the foot down so the knee's tracking. Start to straighten the arms again. From here, step back into downward facing dog. Take a breath, reach through the arms, reach through the legs, and then step forward. The back knee goes down, but we keep the toes curled under, hands to the top of the thigh, and lift your chest high. Let the navel draw in a little bit, and as you bend in this left leg, reach back through the right heel. Lift your chest high with the arms up, start to turn to the left. And then hands down. From here, walk the left foot to the left a little bit. Both arms are nice and straight. And then lower down towards your forearms if you can. Turn that front foot out halfway, so it kind of turns out at a 45 degree angle. Let the knee drop open so the bottom of the foot lifts off the floor. You're on the outer edge. The chest reaches forward, and then it's your choice. You can stay like that, or you can straighten the back leg and reach back through the heel. and then set the back knee down if it's up. Start to straighten your arms and turn your left foot forward. From here, instead of stepping back, I'll have you step forward. You're gonna take your block to the front right corner of your mat and you're gonna step your foot on the block. So the right foot goes on the block. Left foot's gonna go to the left edge of the mat. So naturally this right leg is gonna bend. And so instead we wanna actually straighten the leg. Hold your elbows and just fold forward. And see if you can feel like you're drawing your right thigh bone up towards the hip socket as you let the torso hang. Start to let go with the arms and slowly roll up to standing. Step your feet together, move the block to the left corner of the mat, step your left foot onto the block. Once you're there, step your right foot to the right edge of the mat, straighten this left leg. So as the foot presses down, the thigh bone feels like it lifts up towards the hip socket, and then hold the elbows and fold forward. And naturally this leg is gonna wanna bend, so you gotta really work to keep it straight. Release the arms down, slowly roll on up. Step your feet together, or a couple inches apart rather. One final sun salute. Inhale, arms up, and exhale, fold. Inhale, halfway. Step or jump it back through your vinyasa or straight to down dog. And then from here, look forward and step or jump through to seated. Make your way onto your back. Once you get there, lay down. Let the palms open up, let the feet turn open. If you're at home and you want something a little more comfortable, you can lay down with your legs up the wall. I kind of prefer that half the time. At home, it's nice. Get the chest nice and broad. Make any adjustment to feel pretty comfortable here. And then just take a couple of slow breaths. So essentially, you're just taking this opportunity to really consciously slow down. So you did a lot of poses, a lot of stuff to open up, but resting is just as important as the active recovery. 
And at the point you feel comfortable with that slower pace, just let go of your breath control and relax. So if you're nice and comfortable here at home, feel free to stay here as long as you want. If not, maybe just another minute or two. And thank you so much for tuning in today. Hope to see you soon.